Hey everyone, how's it going? So in this video we'll be talking about something that I've gotten a lot of requests and I've also wanted to make for a while, the Dickey Fuller and the augmented Dickey Fuller tests. So as we know, a big deal in time series modeling is to make sure that the series you're modeling is stationary. So if you're not familiar with that term, I'll link my video on stationarity in the description and you can check that out. But it basically means that the properties of the time series such as mean and standard deviation are not changing over time. So of course, we need to have a formal test because we can always look at the time series and say, I think it's stationary or I think it's not stationary, but we need some kind of robust formal test in order to better tell us. And that is the Dickey Fuller and augmented Dickey Fuller test. So in this video, we'll be going through those tests at a pretty high level. So I'm not gonna delve into the weeds of the mathematics. If that's something you want, you can go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to do that in the future. But this is going to be a high level first, the Dickey Fuller test how we extend that to the augmented Dickey Fuller test, and then we'll even look at the code in Python, which will be made available to you. So let's start off with the Dickey Fuller test. The Dickey Fuller test basically assumes that our time series in question is a AR1 or autoregressive one process. In a nutshell, that just means that our time series Y sub T is equal to some constant mu plus some coefficient phi one times that same time series lagged one period. So this is the crucial part right here, which makes us an AR1 model. It just means that our time series is a function, a linear function of itself lagged one time period in the past, okay? Now the null hypothesis, H0 for the Dickey Fuller test is that phi one, this coefficient in front of the lagged one time series is equal to one. And of course, if you've watched my unit roots video, which I'll also post below, you know that this would mean that the time series has a unit root. And that means that if we were to draw a graph of the time series, it is not stationary. We know that if this phi one is one or greater, the time series is not stationary. Now the alternative hypothesis is that phi one is less than one, in which case the time series would be stationary. So now we see why this null and alternative hypothesis do indeed test for stationarity. Now the first thing that we're going to do is subtract y sub t minus one from both sides. So we're gonna subtract it from the left-hand side and we subtract it from the right-hand side as well. We introduce the notation delta y sub t, which is equal to y sub t minus y sub t minus one. So that's basically how we go from this equation to the equation written just below. And we also introduce a new symbol delta here and delta is simply equal to phi one minus one. Now this transform version here, we can basically write the null and alternative hypothesis by basically considering in terms of delta instead of phi one. If phi one were equal to one, that would mean delta is equal to zero. And if phi one is less than one, that would mean that delta is less than zero, okay? So now basically we're dealing with this model and this null and alternative hypothesis. The reason we do this transformation is so that we can make the left-hand side stationary. So what I mean by that is assume the null hypothesis is true. So assume that delta is equal to zero. Then we basically don't consider this term and your time series is equal to mu, a constant, plus epsilon sub t, which is assumed to be some normally distributed random noise, right? So that would mean that under the null hypothesis, our time series in question, which is now delta y sub t, is stationary. Now the reason why we can't just do a simple t-test for the value of delta is because y sub t minus one is still non-stationary. Why is y sub t minus one non-stationary? Because y sub t is assumed to be non-stationary under the null hypothesis, which is that we have a unit root, okay? But it turns out that we can compute the same exact t statistic. It's just that the distribution that we compare it against is not the t distribution, but instead a specialized distribution called the Dickey Fuller distribution. So explicitly what we do next is we say that the t statistic for delta hat, delta again being the coefficient in front of the lagged one version of the time series is equal to delta hat. So we go ahead and compute delta hat and divide that by the standard error of delta hat. So what's happening here is nothing special. You're just computing the same old t-statistic you would if this was just any old regression. The only difference is that instead of comparing that t-statistic, this one we just calculated, against the normal t-distribution, we need to compare it against the Dickey-Fuller distribution, which I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to that distribution. Again, the reason we need to do this is because we know that under the null hypothesis, y sub t minus one, is non-stationary. It has a unit root and therefore it's non-stationary. If we knew that it was stationary, we could just do the same thing that we've always been doing with the t-distribution. We go ahead and compare this t-stat against this Dickey-Fuller distribution. And then we either find that this t-statistic is less than the critical value or it's greater than the critical value. 
If it's less than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. What that means in real terms is that we reject that it has a unit root, which means that we say that the time series is in fact stationary. On the other hand, if t is greater than the critical value, we do not reject h naught, and we do not have evidence to say that it is stationary. Okay, so that's how we decide robustly for a simple AR1 model if the time series is or is not stationary. Now, of course, the natural question is that, of course, time series models can and will be more complicated than AR1. So how do we extend this to something more complicated? That's where the augmented Dickey-Fuller test comes in. So the augmented Dickey-Fuller test starts with the assumption that the time series is not a simple AR1 model. It says that it's a more complicated ARP model, which is written right here. We begin with the same transformation. We subtract y sub t minus 1 from both sides. On the left-hand side, we get delta y sub t. Oh, this is a mistake. So we get delta y sub t is equal to mu plus delta y sub t minus 1 plus all this other stuff over here. Okay? So the null and alternative hypothesis for the augmented Dickey-Fuller test are actually the exact same. We're again testing whether delta is equal to zero versus delta is less than zero. And the process is the same. We go ahead and calculate the t statistic for delta, same exact way we did here, compared against the same Dickey-Fuller distribution here, and go through the same conclusion process. So if that t stat is less than the critical value, we say it's stationary, otherwise we say it is non-stationary. Now the one extra step we do with the augmented Dickey-Fuller distribution is we have all of these other coefficients beta i. And these we can use a typical t distribution for. We can go ahead and just calculate the t stat for each of these beta, which is simply beta i hat divided by standard error of beta i hat for each of them. We compare this t statistic against the critical value in just the typical t distribution. And then we go ahead and make a conclusion about whether each of these is significant. So this was a pretty high level on the Dickey-Fuller and augmented Dickey-Fuller test. Let's round out this video by looking at very simple code in Python you can run to do this for yourself, all right? You'll just need the one special library, statsmodels.tsa stats tools, and from there you'll import AD Fuller. So this is the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. I have a function here to just generate some simulated AR data. I won't really explain it too much, but that's what it's for. And here is the function to perform the test. It's very simple. It just accepts the time series. You put the time series right into the AD Fuller function and you get two things back. So result zero gives you the statistic and then the p-value is what we care about more and that's stored in result one. So again, if the p-value is less than 0.05, we'll say that it is stationary. However, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, we'll say that it is not stationary. So I just generated an AR1 process here with phi one is equal to 0.5. So we know for a fact that this is stationary. If we look at it, it looks visually stationary, but we never know. So we go ahead and just perform the test, putting in our AR1 process, and we get the p-value of 0 0.000, bunch of zeros, one. So strong evidence that this is stationary, which in fact it is. Now, what if we put in a non-stationary process? So I generated AR1 process with phi equal to one. So this clearly has a unit root, and we can even see visually there's strong evidence of sticking to high and low values. If I were to perform the ADF test here, we get a p-value of 0.66, which is very high. So again, we get evidence that this is not stationary. We can do this on more complicated ones. So we can do an AR2 process. I have phi1 is equal to 0.5, phi2 is equal to 0.3, so this is stationary. If I look at the graph, of course it does look stationary. If I run this data through the augmented Dickey-Fuller test, I get a very, very low p-value again. So enforce that this is a stationary time series. And just to round out the story, here's a AR2 process whose coefficients sum up to one, therefore it is not stationary. We can see that pretty visually, it sticks to high and low values. If I put this AR2 process through my augmented Dickey-Fuller test, I get 0.52, which is clearly higher than 0.05, so this is not stationary. So this code I'll link in the description below, and it's a very, very nice, easy way to tell if your time series is stationary or is not stationary, okay? So please like and subscribe. Hope you like this video, and I'll see you next time.